everybody. Welcome to the Waldock Way. I'm Jessica. And today's video is going to be our homeschool plans for spring, as well as kind of a chatty update on what's working and what's not working in our homeschool lately. Now, first let's kind of review some of the things that I talked about in the fall now that we're in the spring. The first thing I talked about was our one thing, which was gonna be nature study. And I'm just gonna go ahead and report that that has not happened hardly at all this year. It has just kind of been a crazy busy year. Um, Emily is a full blood teenager now and her social schedule has absolutely gone crazy and we're just not home as much as we were before. And so that unfortunately has been something that has fallen by the wayside and has kind of been replaced with um, archery, which is something our entire family has gotten involved with. It does keep us outside. It does actually kind of flow over into nature because we're constantly shooting in different places and talking about the different plant and animal life that we're seeing in those places as we're traveling the state of Florida. Um, but all of the things I said we were going to do for nature study have not gotten done, at least not in the traditional sense. So there is an update on that. Um, I also wanted to update because in the fall I had said that my plan was to split our terms into 12 week terms and to do six weeks of science and six weeks of history or something like that. That also didn't happen. Um, splitting our terms into two different studies was just too much. Emily likes to deep dive. I should have known better. We spent the first 12 weeks basically deep diving into um, Texas and all of the national parks that we visited on our three week long road trip. And we really continued to do a lot of that. And we never really got to the science, not the way I wanted to anyway. So we will be revisiting that science in the future. And for now, my plan is to just kind of stick to one unit study for a longer period of time, or at least until she's over it. Okay. Now let's talk about what is really working in our homeschool as of lately morning baskets are still working. They just so happen to not be at morning anymore. They're happening very frequently over lunch because we're sitting um, and it's just easier to capture her attention when we're sitting down. So we are still doing our middle school morning basket. If you um, are unfamiliar with what's in it, I will link it up here and I'll leave a link in the description box so that you can check that out. That is still working well for us. The discovery decks that I created are working super well for us. I strew one of these almost every single day, unless I forget, in which case she just grabs one from the pile. Um, and she is watching a video typically either before breakfast while she's waking up or while she's eating breakfast. So she is starting her day with some random educational video about something. Um, and a lot of times that leads down some glorious rabbit trails. And so it is working so well in our homeschool lately. It's, it's been amazing. Also, I mentioned in our, my favorites video, I shared with you guys that we have been playing games over dinner for a while now. That is working really, really well. I did a lot of the guess in 10 games um, and we have started doing Professor Noggin. I've absolutely loved the trivia. So I actually picked up a new trivia game that we will be adding after Emily gets it for Easter. And that is this Mount Cleverest. Um, it is basically true or false. It's 300 fascinating facts and you just say it's true or false. And so this will be the newest addition to our dinner time games. Um, if you have a tween or a teen, you will probably are in a similar situation. We're just not home. We are always on the go and dinner is the one time we are all together at the table. So we've really been capitalizing on that as much as possible. Uh, with games. And then if I can sneak in an educational game, it's like a win-win. And so that's what that one will be. Okay. Let's go ahead and get down to the plans for the spring. I've tried to keep them as simple as possible because we are seriously on the go so, so much. Um, Emily is doing archery still, which is a lot. And we're also doing it as a family. So we pretty much have a tournament almost every single weekend. She's also started doing karate, which is three hours, two times a week. So that is again, out of the house a lot because nothing is close to us. Um, and so there's all these things going on. Plus she's a member of 4-H with archery. So there's other things that she's doing with 4-H. We're just not home a lot. So I'm trying to keep our academics simple 
so that there's still a lot of room for the books and games and fun that we really, really crave. So for language arts, she is still working her way through editor in chief. Um, I bought the digital download, so that's not what the cover looks like. She has, let's see, she's on lesson 10 and there's only 12 lessons. So she is almost finished with this. Um, in case you didn't see our previous video, what I love about it is it teaches the lesson. Um, this lesson is on run on sentences and sentence fragments. And then once it teaches you what a run on and a fragment is, you kind of show your skills by editing a passage to find the run on and the fragments. And there is up here in the corner, this level, not all of them have it, has like, you know, the numbers that you would bubble in once you've found them. So it's teaching her uh, grammar and spelling and all of these skills, not through her drilling and killing, but through her editing, which she finds super interesting. Um, and she's actually even started helping me edit products because she wants to help out with the wall duck weight. So that's been really fun as well. Uh, she is still taking book club with Mary Hannah Wilson and the books that they will be doing a book club on this spring are the Birch Bark House, The Silver Arrow, Grounded, Manatee Summer, and the first Harry Potter, which she's actually really excited to read this one again. And then for math, she's gonna keep doing teaching textbooks. Um, I ask that she does three to four a week. Wherever we are is where we are. I don't necessarily care if we finish one this year and start one next year. We just kind of keep rolling with it. So that's where we are with math. Um, and then for our unit study for the spring, I'm really, really excited to dive into Explorers and Exploration. So we read the Explorer Academy books, which Emily absolutely loved. We're probably gonna read these again um, just because she likes the whole exploration part of it. And uh, because we read those, she was like, I would really love to learn more about explorers and the things that they were exploring. Um, in the books, they're assigned rooms like um, Mount Everest and uh, the Great Barrier Reef. So we're going to be doing some of our where was unit studies as they come into contact with the book. So we'll be doing like, where was the Great Barrier Reef or where is the Great Barrier Reef? Where is um, Mount Everest? I can't remember the other two right now off the top of my head, but we'll be doing those as well for the rooms that they're assigned to. And then we will be really, really diving in to the new Exploring History, which is a living history unit study through the eyes of adventurous explorers. And so this new unit study is basically 12 mini units that are all of the different who and what was kind of bundled together creatively. So we will be doing what was the age of exploration? Who was Amelia Earhart? Who was Christopher Columbus? Who was Ernest Shackleton? Who was Ferdinand Magellan? Who was Jacques Cousteau? Who was Leif Erikson? What was the Lewis and Clark expedition? Who was Marco Polo? Who was Neil Armstrong? who was Sacagawea, and who was Sally Ride. So we will be diving into all of those mini units in the next 12 weeks. And then Kevin and Emily really, really love to do STEM together once or twice a week. So the subscription boxes that they have asked me to stay subscribed to for the spring for them, because they've become their favorite, are the Crunch Labs, hands down, has been a favorite for forever. It was actually just featured in my favorites video. So they will continue to do that one as well as the uh, Generation Genius. This has become kind of the new science one that they really, really like. And then as a family, we will be also doing Universal Yums, which has been a favorite for forever. Um, this is probably the subscription we've had the longest and like not canceled. So we will be continuing to do those. And then, <clears throat> And this is actually the ancient Australia because I haven't gotten the new ones in yet. But we've also gotten some of the history unboxed um, that goes along with the exploration. So I've 
like a la carte or whatever ordered the specific boxes that I wanted that felt like they tied in with the exploration unit. And so these we will be doing along with our exploring history. And then obviously, like I said, we still want to do all the fun stuff. So I'm still hoping to fit in some poetry tea time. I'm hoping we can get back to some nature study. We will see. I don't have high hopes for that, but we will fingers crossed, see what we can get in. Um, we are hoping to still read lots and lots of books together and play lots and lots of games together. That has always kind of been our family culture. And so we will get in as much gameplay as we can. And that's what I was hoping to leave room for by making sure that our academics were semi light this semester and that I wasn't over planning. I also tend to over plan in the spring. Um, knowing that the spring's weather is going to get nicer and we're going to want to be outside more and we're not going to want to be inside doing as much book work. So this feels like a good amount to me. This feels like we're getting in some language arts. We're getting in some math. We're going to have fun with some, you know, science boxes here and there. We're going to do exploring through history, which is going to be a little bit of history and explorers and geography and science. And that's going to be a really well-rounded unit. And then we can get outside and enjoy that wonderful Florida weather this spring. Now, I would absolutely love it if you would tell me your spring homeschool plans down in the comments because I always love reading and hearing about what you guys are doing in your homeschool.